All right, let's preview that address by the president this evening. Alex van den Heve is with the VETS School of Governance, and he joins me now. Alex, good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. So opening up the borders, lifting the care for you, that's what the president may announce this evening when he addresses the nation. Others may say about damn time, but some may say tread carefully. What do you say? Well, I think that on opening the borders, it would be, uh, it, it, it sort of, it could have been done several months ago. The, uh, the question of the risk posed by foreign travellers um, uh, it really depends on the extent to which we've put in place protocols in the hospitality industry and in international travel and airports. And I think that that, that in fact should have been done by the end of April. And, um, and I think this industry has been prepared for quite a long period of time and it's going to face a sort of a devastating consequence if we don't open up the borders properly. Yeah. So I think it is a long time coming, but there are some indications that they're not going to completely open it up. And, um, and I think that those are troubling. Mm. There's always been this talk of a second wave, and as, as people uh, have been discussing the opening of borders, that concern has been raised once again. Should we be worried about that? As we, prefer, uh, as we prepare to move to level one and may see that international travel, whether it's full or even limited international travel? Well, if we have um, a, 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 any kind of resurgence, it's not going to come from foreign travelers. It's going to come from a relaxed conduct in areas where super spreading is a high risk. So in um, any areas where people gather extensively and particularly in closed spaces, where uh, the ventilation is poor, that is where you're going to get a resurgence. And that's where you see a lot of the resurgence and a lot of the new cases emanating from in the United States and in parts of Europe. But you're not going to get it from foreign travel. Mm. Um, that is a, com a completely different uh, um, is a, is a sort of set of risks there. It's not a super spreading risk and is largely managed by pro health protocols, pretty much like much of our industry is at the moment including the hospitality industry. Mm. What conditions can be put in place to be extra careful if international travel is allowed? Should people uh, you know, be quarantined when they arrive? Should there be stringent visa application processes? H how can we be cautious in our approach? So uh, as, as far as what I've seen, there are detailed pro health protocols for the hotel industry in South Africa when people arrive. Mm. But um, there's some value in having a pre-travel test, so within 72 hours, and there's sort of a request that people um, uh, sort of self-isolate prior to leaving. But I think quarantine periods are uh, within the current context don't really make any difference to the risk. And I think that substitutes the quarantine periods. And, and a quarantine is where you don't know what somebody's status is and you're just having them sit around waiting. Mm. The, um, the risk associated with that can be managed. So right now we already have a community-based infection. So the, you know, that horse is already bolted. And that's really what determines what your risk status is in the country. Not a few people who might be positive who kind of, uh, who, who enter from traveling. So what you want to make sure is that when people do travel on an airliner or in an airport, that they don't get the disease in those settings. And when they arrive in South Africa, that they, even if they're positive, that they don't infect anybody. And secondly, that travel, travelers who are not infected don't get infected by South Africans and the mm. hotels. So those are the things that you manage. As we're managing shopping centers, as we're managing all employers at the moment, as well as restaurants and hotels for um, in, in internal travel. Mm. So I think that those are the things that really manage the risk. Um, so uh, the, the reality is that somebody traveling from Bononi to Johannesburg who's positive poses um, uh, as much risk as somebody coming from uh, Italy to South mm. Africa who happens to get through the net. Yeah. What we have also seen uh, since moving down to level two, um, Alex, is that we've seen the, the low infection rate, even though the expectation was that you know, people may let their guard down, there will be a lot of movement, and as a result, infections may rise. But that wasn't really the case, and, and probably won't be the case even when we move uh, to level one. What's behind that? Yeah, so I think that we're still going to see a lot of analysis about what exactly has happened in the last few months. And one of the, uh, certainly one of the theories being posed at the moment is that we've actually had very high levels of infection, much higher than what we've been detecting. 
in a lot of high-risk settings, so areas where populations are concentrated. So the seroprevalence studies that are being done are showing very, very high levels of, of infection, and those weren't the infections that were detected through testing. And what's happened is that the downward trajectory in the epidemic in those localized settings is largely a consequence of a form of uh, a, a degree of herd immunity that is developed. Yeah. So it hasn't necessarily, although prevention and some of our general sort of ambient non-pharmaceutical interventions are, are definitely impacting generally, what's happened is that the size of the susceptible population in these very high-risk areas has gone down. But we still have a very large residual susceptible population that is going to get infected if we do let our guard down mm. in other areas. So I think that the, the issue is it's far from over, but we're not doing badly uh, overall. But we, we clearly let the infection run through many of our high-risk areas. But as I said, this is still an open question. And I think that a lot of analysis of the data, when it's actually made publicly available, which unfortunately hasn't been, mm. um, can be properly analyzed. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Alex van den Heerwe is with the VETS School of Governance.